I'm Sunny Xie of Peking University. After 20 years of being a tenured professor at Harvard's Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology, I relocated to Peking University in the summer of 2018. Many people ask me why. It was by no means an easy decision. It involved many considerations such as love for my parents, my alma mater, and the motherland. What really tipped the balance in the end was science. As a scientist, in the field I'm in, I simply have better research opportunities in Beijing, which is a true reflection of what China has achieved during my years spent away in America. In 1985, after receiving my bachelor's degree in chemistry from Peking University, I went to the United States as a young PhD student. When I first arrived in America, I was greatly inspired by the ideals of his founding fathers. As an international student, I was embraced by my American professors. In my 20 years at Harvard, as an immigrant professor, support from my colleagues helped me to realize my dream as a scientist and my rise in academia. Such inclusiveness, in a broader sense, was what made America a great country. Therefore, never did I expect that only six days after I relocated to Peking University, the United States would implement the first China-specific tariffs. Soon after, the National Institute of Health ordered hundreds of U.S. academic institutions to investigate their scientists who conducted collaborative research in China. This led to the closing of several laboratories and hardship for many well-established researchers in the U.S. I wrote a commentary article that was published in Cell magazine in September of 2019 with the title, Diseases Have No Borders, Neither Should Research. In this article, I used my own experience as an example of how Sino-U.S. collaboration benefit both countries and ultimately the whole world. While still a Harvard professor, I collaborated with Peking University professor Jie Qiao and Fu Chou Tan to improve the genetic testing of embryos during the in vitro fertilization. Using a high-precision single-cell whole genome amplification method, MOBAC, originally developed by my Harvard lab. This led to the first Malbec baby born in 2014. Since then, China has had more than 1,000 Malbec babies free from the genetic disorders of their parents. We did not do the research to serve China alone. There are thousands of monogenic diseases in the world suffered by people of all ethnic groups. I am delighted that this technology has since been adopted in the United States and worldwide. This work arguably won me the Albany Prize and the membership of U.S. Academy of Medicine. Since my relocation, I've been able to continue medically impactful research by collaborating with my American colleagues. Once again, Sino-U.S. collaboration is mutually beneficial, contrary to what Americans led to believe that China is the sole beneficiary. Little did I know, only a few months later, the COVID-19 pandemic would prove my words so unprecedentedly. As we see the global response of all kinds through medical aids, volunteer work, generous donations, collaborative research, web seminars, and cheering concerts, never has there been more truths in this echo, the virus knows no borders, and the same goes for the fight against it.
When Wuhan was locked down on January 23rd of 2020, I was attending the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Hoping to help fight COVID-19, I hopped on the next plane to Beijing. Our work began on the third day after the Chinese New Year. While my students were still in quarantine at home, Yun Long Cao, the only Harvard group member, now a researcher in my lab, joined me on the same day. We started working around the clock. Our expertise is single-cell genomics rather than virology or immunology. When we realized single-cell genomics could help to find neutralizing antibodies against the coronavirus, we were thrilled. To this day, there has not been a highly effective drug to cure COVID-19. Plasma therapy is rather effective in treating the disease, but limited in supply. Its active components are the neutralizing antibodies produced by the human immune system, which block virus from infecting cells. Our goal is to find the neutralizing antibodies from COVID-19 survivors and inject them into patients as the substitute of plasma therapy. On February 2nd of 2020, we went to Beijing Yuan Hospital, a designated hospital for COVID-19. We met President Jin, who immediately agreed to collaborate by providing blood samples from recovering patients. Bing and Xianghua, two researchers of Yuan Hospital, were trained in our lab by Yunlong and Chen Yang, our sequencing facility manager, before they are entering the hospital's P3 lab. Wearing heavy protective gears, they were supposed to work no more than five hours per day, but they always overworked. And in the end, they couldn't go home for almost three months. At Peking University, we were fighting day and night to collect and analyzing sequencing data. It was truly a challenging and exciting time. To find neutralizing antibodies in blood is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Luckily, with the latest technology of single cell genomics, it took us only two months to find 14 highly potent neutralizing antibodies. The best of them will be developed into a drug to cure COVID-19. It can also be used to provide short-term prevention for patients, families, or medical staff. We now have completed the testing on an animal model. I'm happy to report that when our neutralizing antibody was injected into infected mice, the virus load was reduced by more than 2,400 times. And when injected into uninfected mice, they were free from the viral infection. The rapid screening methodology we developed will prepare us for the next outbreak. Clinical trials are underway. At present, there are few COVID-19 patients in China. So our clinical trials will have to be conducted abroad. If proven to be successful, we will certainly want it to benefit the whole world because its purpose knows no nation, because humanity is above all. I would like to express my deep gratitude to my lab members and our collaborators for their dedication and perseverance. It has been a great teamwork. As scientists, we wanted so badly to find a cure for COVID-19. We have made a defining progress, which might allow us to stop the pandemic. Being scientists, we all believe that it is science, not politics, that will save mankind from the disaster of COVID-19 and other disasters yet to come. I would like to end my talk by reiterating my message. Diseases have no borders. Neither does research, nor should humanity. Thank you.